Welcome back. It's 613 here. We are just days away from a total solar eclipse traveling across the US. In fact, around 31 million people all the way from Texas to Maine going to be in the path of this uh, event, and we are getting excited about it here in New Orleans. We will at least be able to see a partial eclipse and who better to talk to than an astrophysicist, Dr. Nicole Cologne. She's joining us uh, to talk more about it. And um, Dr. Cologne, I want to talk about exactly the difference between the total eclipse and the partial eclipse we're going to see in New Orleans and how different are the two? What exactly will we see here in Southeast Louisiana? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a, a total solar eclipse happens when um, the moon basically completely blocks the sun. So 100% total eclipse means that the sun's disk is fully covered and then you see the outer atmosphere, the corona. Um, but in a partial eclipse, you'll basically see the moon like taking a bite out of the sun, if you will. And so it's definitely a little different, um, but you'll still get a sense, um, like an eerie sense of dimming. You know, the sunlight is still blocked pretty heavily. Yeah, and I remember, you know, we all think back to 2017. That was the last one that got all the publicity here. And I've actually got a comparison of the two. I don't know if our control room can take it and if you can see it, but it shows in red there. That's the total solar eclipse that we saw in 2017. It was to the north of New Orleans. And then here in for 2024, it's also going to be to the north. What is the difference? And if you look at the two, I don't know if we can pull it up here, control room. The difference between the two, they cross. Why are they completely in different directions here? Yeah, it, it's, you know, a matter of really think of physics and orbits. So um, the Earth and Moon are both orbiting around the Sun, um, but then the Moon is also orbiting around the Earth. And so it's literally the way things align over time um, that leads to different paths of totality when eclipses happen. And eclipses actually happen about every 18 months or so anyway. And so um, it's just that this time, uh, this is you know largely over the contiguous US, just like it was in 2017. Uh, but other times of the years, um, the eclipses happen, you know, in other parts of the world. Sure. And, you know, a lot of people getting ready for this one. Unfortunately, I'm looking at the forecast here for the Gulf Coast region. It is not looking great for us. Um, I do see lots of clouds. Are, is NASA going to be showing anything? I mean, obviously, uh, in other parts of the country where people can watch it if they can't see it here on in our area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a ton of resources and there'll be a live broadcast um, on the NASA website, uh, go.nasa.gov slash eclipse 2024. So definitely follow along if it's too cloudy there. And do, um, do, do scientists do anything special when this is happening? Do they do special studies to get more information? What do they learn or hoping to learn? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the sun is so bright normally, right, um, that it's hard to study the outer wispy faint atmosphere normally. And so during an eclipse, it gives us a really unique advantage um, to study that outer atmosphere, um, which affects, uh, causes space weather, you know, interactions with Earth's atmosphere. And so we'll be launching um, different uh, like sounding rockets and there will be airborne experiments, um, small planes flying um, with instruments to study, um, yeah, the, the sun's uh, outer atmosphere during the total solar eclipse. All right. Well, thank you so much. I hope you get a chance to see it. I know we're hoping we get to see it down here. If not, there's other ways, I guess, to check it out. But we thank you so much for joining us. That's Dr. Nicole Cologne, their uh, astrophysicist with NASA. And if you do want to join us here, we are going to have coverage of it starting uh, at 1.15 in the afternoon on Monday. We'll be covering it for a couple of hours here. The peak of this is going to be around 1.49 in the afternoon for us. It all just depends on what the weather looks like. We'll be following that closely for you as we do get closer and closer to Monday. Of course, we will have a much better idea on how things shape up. I do want to start my forecast here with the solar eclipse and how I think it's going to shape up right now. It's still not looking like it's going to be in our favor. I've got the path there of totality for you, and that's from Texas all the way through up Maine. That's where it gets completely dark and they see the biggest effects for us. We'll have 80 to 85% coverage here and the biggest problem is this right here clouds and maybe some rain now at the moment I look at trends here when we're still this far out and the trends really have not been in our favor the one place they maybe are looking a bit better or for parts of North Texas we will see this model still has clouds a little bit thick but others clear out the clouds by that afternoon we'll see timing of all this is going to determine but for us it's still not looking too great here we've got maybe rain and lots of clouds to deal with for your Monday afternoon once again it'll happen in between one 15 to 230. That's when we'll be in the maximum of it all. 
For us this morning, though, we are about to get into a great stretch of weather. We've got our cold front through here. Still some rain near the coast. A few sprinkles out there. Not a big deal. Things are windy, though, as things begin to clear on out. So there's your showers near the coast this morning, but everyone else done with the rainfall. Big low pressure. That's what's causing all this. This is also causing the severe weather that we've been talking about the past couple of days. That's now moving to the east coast. Snow wrapping around it. This is a big dynamic storm system, in other words. And our temperatures, they are starting to cool off. We're in the 50s for even both sides of the lake down to 59 in New Orleans now 56 in Hammond 51 in Macomb and that north wind it's going to keep us dry and cooler as we go through today. So we'll be in the 60s through lunchtime. We will briefly climb into the low 70s. Don't expect it to be a calm day with regard to the wind. It's going to stay windy all day long. So while it's really checking all the boxes for picture perfect weather, the only thing that I think you're going to find annoying if you're outside this afternoon, the winds. We are gusting now to 37 at the lakefront. Crossing the bridges overpasses, very windy. Colleen's got a traffic update for you shortly. 24 out at Kenner, 23 up in Macomb. Gulfport earlier was gusting over 30 miles an hour. Tonight, staying breezy and chilly. You'll probably need a jacket or a sweater tomorrow morning. We'll be in the 40s for areas both sides of the lake. Low 50s in the immediate metro, but just outside the metro. You drop into the mid to upper 40. So we're not done with the chilly weather just yet. Now the good news, while our mornings are cool Thursday and Friday, the afternoons are perfect. 74 and sunny on Thursday, 77 and sunny on Friday. For those weekend plans, we start to see those clouds march on in here. Saturday's probably partly cloudy. Sunday is mostly cloudy. And then Monday, it could be overcast looking at it. We will hope there is a break in the clouds around that 149 time mark. But that's a big gamble right now. There's your marine forecast. Big heads up for our boaters. Small craft advisory in effect. It is choppy and windy out there. That chop and the wind will be with us through tonight. Things still breezy tomorrow out of the northwest, but the winds will start to die down late Thursday afternoon. And by Friday, things are a lot calmer. Pressure is rising, by the way, this morning. High tides, those are going to happen later on this evening. And your low tides happening this morning. We'll be back.